the hunter asked. You had entered that person's heart in order to know what dream was. Why did you decide to pull out? Did you find out the truth? The sage was trying to find out why we externalize things. This is, this is the phenomenon we notice most obviously in dreams. We, we happily assume our dreams are in here, but at the time, that's not the case. At the, at the time of the dream, we are wandering around in an external world. We're not thinking, oh, this is all happening in my head. We assume the external reality of the world which we're experiencing in dream. In order to find out why this was so, the sage put himself out. The sage went out there into the psyche of another human being using some kind of yogic power. And when he did this, he experienced cosmic dissolution. There was nowhere to go out. He had to come back. But then he went out again on a subtler level and he experienced another cosmic dissolution until he was forced to come back again. There was nowhere for him to go out to. And finally he had to come back to himself. He couldn't find the answer out there. He had to come back to his own awareness. He had to turn the direction of his own attention around. Instead of following the habitual direction of the attention, he had to come back to its own nature, come back to the nature of his own awareness. So it seems that he has found the truth. The sage replied, to begin with, the creation has no cause for coming into being. So we get right back to first principles. We're wondering about the external creation, but there isn't any creation. There's no cause for it to come into being. There's no initial cause. There's no big bang. There's no God created the world. Hence, neither the word creation nor the object creation are real. If there's no such thing as the creation, then the word creation has no meaning. It has got no reality. It's not pointing to anything. They do not exist. But this ignorance or unreality is also a notion which arises in consciousness or reality. And in consciousness or reality, what exists is obvious. However, saying that there is no creation also gives us a notion, doesn't it? We get into this rejection of notions. So we have to come back to what is real. And what is real is what is obvious. What exists is obvious. Consciousness is reality. And what is obvious is what is happening right now. Not what we think is happening right now, but what is actually happening. So it's obvious in the sense that we don't even have to think about it. It's the experiencing which is happening right now. That's what's obvious. It's so hard to get in touch with that because we are so attached to our ideas of what reality is that we overlook the obvious. Douglas Harding's book on having no head is subtitled on the rediscovery of the obvious. I think it's Zen and the rediscovery of the obvious but they had to put in the word Zen for marketing reasons. Although it is Zen, because that's what Zen is, the rediscovery of the obvious. We've got too complicated, our heads complicate things. And if you find what I'm saying here baffling, then it indicates you're caught up in this contemplation. You're caught up in your emotional belief in what reality is. Can you come back? to what is happening right now? Can you come back to the immediate experiencing? I can only tell you the truth from the point of view of one in whom ignorance and foolishness have ceased. 
What is true from the point of view of the ignorant and the foolish, I do not know. Ignorance and foolishness is forming notions and believing them to be reality. The truth is, all this is pure consciousness which pervades everything. And this should not be taken as a statement of belief or a statement of fact. It has to be regarded as a way of describing what is obvious. And one way to appreciate that is just to realize that for something to be so, you have to be aware of it. That's all. You're looking at this video. So you're aware of this video. Correct? So look at this awareness. This awareness in which there is a video video of me talking right now. You're aware of it. So rather than focus on the video, focus on this awareness. This is what you can do with everything. This is when you can realize that everything's happening in your awareness. If you look away from the video, or if you start drifting off into a daydream, then there's awareness of that daydream. If you turn and look out the window, then there's awareness. There's, al there's always awareness. And without awareness, how can we say there's anything? So in this sense, it's pure consciousness. This is awareness, which pervades everything. Come back to that awareness. Keep coming back to that awareness and start appreciating it.